Welcome to this vSphere 7.0 U1 vSphere with Tanzu demonstration. This demonstration, we're going to show you how to deploy vSphere with Tanzu using a HA proxy rather than NSXT for load balancing purposes. So I already have a HA proxy deployed. And at this point, I have already got the prerequisites, such as a content library that contains the images for my TKG guest clusters. So everything is in place first to start with workload management, which is essentially the deployment of vSphere with Tanzu. Now it says here that you do have to have a HA proxy. I do have a HA proxy already set up. Might observe it's across three different networks, management, workload, and front end for load balancing. So I can crack on with the rest of the deployment. I only have one cluster, Octo cluster. I'm just gonna select that one there for the deployment. Next step is to select the control plane size. This is the size of the virtual machines that will be used by your control plane uh, Kubernetes cluster in vSphere with Tanzu. You need a policy uh, selected so we understand what disk size is required. And now we get into configuring the load balancer, which is essentially the role of the HA proxy. So in here, you do need to supply things like an IP address and the uh, proxy port, which is 5556. Uh, the username and password would have been set up when you deployed the proxy. And we just supply those once again. The IP address range that would also have been supplied when you set up the HA proxy. I'll just add in my range there. And then you can get the server certificate authority from the actual appliance itself that's in slash etc slash ha proxy slash server dot crt. So now we get into configuring the networks. Uh, the first network here is the management network. This is where the supervisor control plane VMs are going to come up. You need to supply a range of at minimum four IP addresses, but you want to give maybe a higher range than that for purposes of upgrade and rolling upgrades, that kind of thing. The usual networking information, subnet mask, gateways, DNS server, DNS search domains are all added here, as well as your NTP server. So once we have this configured, I mentioned the HA proxy has three networks. There's the management network, there is the workload network, and there is the front end or load balancer network. Here we're now going to configure the workload network. Um, the IP address range for services, you can leave that at the default. That's what's used by Kubernetes. But we do need to create at least one workload network at this point. So you just pick the distributed port group on which it's on. Uh, usual gateway and subnet details for that network as well. And then a range of IP addresses that can be used by not just the supervisor control plane VMs, but also the Tanzu Kubernetes guest cluster VMs as well. Now, what you'll notice, and we'll see this later, is the supervisor control plane VMs are added to both networks. So they have a connection to the management network and they have a connection to the workload network. We just added the uh, content library there. We looked at the content library previously, which is all the images for our TKG uh, guest operating systems. And when that is all complete, we can leave it deploy. So what you see now in the workload management plane in the clusters view is you can see that the cluster is actually going through the configuring stage. So what will happen here, and I'll be able to speed things up just in the interest of time, but we will see the three control plane VMs get deployed. Uh, these uh, make up the Kubernetes API server for our, uh, for our supervisor as well. And this is how we interact with uh, vSphere with Tanzu. So we get those three control plane VMs. You can see them being deployed there. They will get powered on. They will get reconfigured. As I mentioned, they need to be plumbed up on both the management network in order to communicate to vCenter and also on the workload uh, network so that there can be communication between the TKG guest clusters and the supervisor control plane as well. So they're getting rolled out there. As I said, once we see them deployed, we will see them get uh, powered on and reconfigured. And then the last step really is to uh, plumb up uh, an IP address on 
the load balancer front end network and this is how we would be able to connect to our control plane kubernetes api server so it will consume one of the ip addresses from the load balancer front end network for that purpose so now we can see the reconfiguring take place and this will be the uh, plumbing up of the uh, the additional networks so um, in a moment we'll be able to just pop into um, the hosting clusters view and we'll actually take a look at how that actually got deployed and we should be able to see the fact that each of these uh, supervisor control plane vms are actually uh, configured on uh, both the uh, management network and the workload workload network as i mentioned great so why don't we just have a look at the hosting clusters at this particular point and there we can see our three uh, supervisor VMs. Uh, at this point in time, it looks like it's not completed configuring, but some of the control plane VMs have indeed been configured. So this is uh, would have been the, the uh, primary, I guess. So you can see it's got interfaces on two different networks there, the management network and the um, workload. And this one is still, we're still waiting for this um, final supervisor control plane VM to be plumbed up on both networks. Let's just wait a moment and we'll give that final control plane VM an opportunity to uh, get configured. And then we can proceed with the rest of the setup. They're all configured. And indeed, if we look at the workload management plane, we are now plumbed up the control plane node as an IP address on the load balancer front end network. We can now go ahead and create our first namespace. Let me just get rid of the tasks while we do that. The namespace will allow us to build a, a resource pool, for want of a better description, for our developers. And so it means that we can control their ability to access resources and how many resources they consume on our cluster. Uh, here in the status, we can open the um, the Kubernetes API server IP address and we can see the available Kubernetes CLI tools that developers can download to interact with their namespace. We can give it a storage class and this uh, sorry storage policy, which will actually become a storage class in Kubernetes. And we can actually edit capacity and usage limits as well if we so wish. Can even do it on a per policy basis in the storage. And our content library, which we configured during the deployment, is available there as well. And that completes the demonstration.